What's going on guys, this is Rob. And in the last video, when we covered the return of Worldbreaker Hulk, I mentioned that I never really knew whatever happened to Scar, he just seemed to kind of disappear. A lot of you guys said that he returned in Gamma Flight. And so we're gonna cover that here, right? This is the return of Scar in Marvel Comics. Now, one of the things that I do wanna specify is that in Jerry Dugan's Hulk Volume 3, that one of the things we found out was that, that really Scar had like faced off against Doc Samson and had actually been depowered. So he just kind of lived in Paris for a while and just kind of hunted in, the, hunted in the wilderness. This is the return of Scar in terms of him being like the Incredible Hulk type character that we know, right? So that's why we're doing this and not the other one. But what this does is this initially picks up with Gamma Flight seemingly coming directly out of the Immortal Hulk. So for those of you guys who aren't really familiar with that, the Immortal Hulk was the name of the Incredible Hulk run that was done by, by uh, Al Ewing. And what he actually established there was a big change with the Hulk mythos. That in years past, you just had Bruce Banner who turned into the Incredible Hulk, and that was basically it. What Al Ewing did is he introduced something called the Green Door, which was basically that anybody who had in some capacity been infected with gamma radiation, right? Even just a single drop of it, that whenever they die, they would encounter a Green Door, which would be their way to come back to life, basically. But the Green Door was all kind of part and parcel to what was called the One Below All, which was quite literally the answer to the question, what happens when the One Above All hulks out? We have that video series down in the description. It's amazing. It was like this enormous revelation at the end that the one below all was basically the Hulk persona of the one above all. It was kind of nuts. <laughs> it was pretty wild. But the thing about this is that the Gamma Flight team was by and large and still is a kind of unofficial team in the sense that they were initially put together in response to Carol Danvers, who was leading Alpha Flight at the time, trying to figure out what had happened to the Incredible Hulk when he just vanished one day. And so Gamma Flight basically sort of formed over the course of Immortal Hulk, which leads us to this. So where the Incredible Hulk had largely just taken off, the Gamma Flight is composed of some ridiculously heavy hitters, one of whom is probably the single most underrated character in Marvel Comics, the Absorbing Man Crusher Creel. This guy can absorb and turn into any material in existence like literally adamantium, the whole nine yards. If he can touch it, he can turn into it. It's crazy how capable this guy is. I mean, this guy used to go toe to toe with a juggernaut back in the day in Marvel Comics, if that gives you any indication. But the thing about this is that Gamma Flight for the most part is kind of operating as what is in effect a sort of Hulk rescue team to a degree. So for those of you guys who are really old school in terms of Marvel Comics, remember the way that X Factor was introduced under Bob Layton and then Walter and Louise Simonson back in the 1980s? That's what this is, right? It's almost like kind of the X Factor of the Incredible Hulk comics in some ways. But the idea behind this whole thing is that they end up coming across what is in effect a kind of rampage that's taking place out there. And in fact, it's really the news that they ultimately hear about it, right? It's taking place in Austin with just like this giant, crazy looking thing that's like a giant monster. Now, of course, Gamma Flight responds because their charter is one half to kind of contain and control various gamma irradiated threats that exist out there. Their charter isn't even fully fleshed out here, but the other part of it is that they're always on the hunt for like anything that can deal with gamma radiation that could be like a gamma irradiated being gone awry, right? So like in the same way the X-Men deal with like mutants that kind of go nuts and use their powers for nefarious purposes, Gamma Flight is similar in that way but of course this leads them to traveling to austin to figure out what's going on literally by way of teleportation and they're immediately attacked by this thing which keeps on growing you know keeps on throwing things out by saying that like it's not going to go back that it's not going to go back to like green spring right we don't know exactly what green spring is but one of the cool things one of the crazy things that goes on in this fight is that crusher creel had previously been given a piece of secondary adamantium by titania titania is basically his girlfriend and she kind of, they've been like on again, off again lovers in Marvel Comics for years. They're like the most dysfunctional couple ever, right? So like every couple from every reality TV show that's ever been made, it's basically them. But the secondary adamantium that he has, while it's not as capable as true adamantium, which is what's bonded to Wolverine's skeleton, what it does do is it makes him almost unstoppable in relation to like this girl who's just tearing everything up. But what it does do is it allows uh, Crusher Creel and even Gamma Flight, especially led by Doc Samson to kind of talk her down. And when that happens, she literally starts to realize that they're not with Greenspring. And so once that happens, she
she reveals her name as being Dion, but then of course they're met by the arrival of what is a person from Greenspring, and this comes in the form of Scar. And literally his presence scares the crap out of her. Now, we are gonna get an explanation of like how Scar came back and all that kind of stuff, and why he's got these mandibles on his head, right? It looks kind of wild, he looks like a predator. Right? It's kind of it's kind of nuts. It does look cool though, I'm not gonna lie. But something that I do wanna point out here is that Scar is well known to the world as a whole, and even to like Gamma Flight themselves. Now, they ultimately end up engaging in a fool's errand, right? Like literally Samson just kind of walks over to Scar, tries to have a conversation with him, and Scar makes it his last one i mean that's literally what we're talking about here it is scar this guy's kind of just next level this dude i mean here's here's the thing about scar man and people people don't understand it's the reason why people are so angry about scar in the she hulk tv show because he looks like he drinks vegetable powder mixed with coconut water wears air walks and like meditates in the morning like that version of scar is trash scar is supposed to be just this beast of a character right just this just demon of a character in Marvel Comics. I mean, that's literally what he is, man. This guy, this dude's a one-man army. He's a wrecking machine, right? And so Gamma Flight has no chance here. They literally just get crushed by, by Scar. Now, they are able to kind of force him off to a degree. It is kind of funny because for the most part, they shouldn't be able to, but ultimately the team is just kind of like teleported away, or at least most of them are. The only ones who aren't teleported away in time because literally Gamma Flight's running on a shoestring budget, so their teleportation system basically crashes. The ones who are left behind are like Titania and Doc, neither one of which is gonna be able to take on Scar, right? I mean, he'll beat these guys to death and be home in time for cornflakes. That's literally the, what we're talking about here, right? But of course, once the system is basically rebooted by the absorbing man who absorbs technology and then just like resets the system, right? Like literally gives it the juice it needs in order to, to basically send everybody else in. But the thing about it is that in the midst of this great big huge fight, you end up having the federal government responding. Now, that's one of the things that I do want to specify here, right? There is a character that we will kind of see return to a degree named General Fordian. When it came to the Al Ewing Incredible Hulk mythos, General Fordian was introduced to us as a Hulk specific villain that was really more predicated in kind of the evolution of Thunderbolt Ross to a degree. They're two distinctly different characters, but where Thunderbolt Ross was the guy who was after the Incredible Hulk for personal reasons, General Fordian was to a degree, but it was also trying to find a way to secure gamma radiation and then weaponize it for the military. So we had much bigger aspirations and really even applications in terms of his pursuit for the Incredible Hulk. But the overall goal here, or the overall point here, is that of course, General Fordian was defeated, right? I mean, that guy was taken out. He was basically killed, right? More or less left for dead. And then in turn, the federal government still has its Hulk buster systems. And so by and large, when the federal government shows up, I mean, it's Scar, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, he still trashes them. It's just one of those things where Scar's like, look, man, I'll beat you within an inch of your life. And the only reason why it'll take the extra step and kill you outright is because I'm having a good day. Right? I, I woke up, the sun was shining, the birds were chirping, and I decided to spare your life. But if I had woken up this morning and the sky was cloudy, oh, well, then my friend, I would have sent you to meet your maker. That's literally how Scar works, man. It's just one of the coolest things. <laughs> Right, it's just one of the coolest things. But ultimately, because of all this pandemonium and all this chaos, what we end up doing is switching over to a quote unquote undisclosed location, which is basically the headquarters of Project Greenspring. And what we end up finding out here is that the person that is heading up the entirety of Project Greenspring, which by the way, over the course of this, I may end up referring to it as Project Greenscreen. Uh, just be aware of that, I may make that mistake. It actually turns out to be Emil Blonsky, also known as Abomination. So that's cool because we basically get to see his character return. More so than that, what he's doing is he's actually removing pieces of his skin and they're using that to graft gamma radiation to different people. Now, we'll see the end result of that because one of the things that happens is that Crusher Creel tries to teleport them out or at least teleport Gamma Flight away. And when he does, he actually ends up teleporting them to the future instead. And when they arrive there, it's just like this landscape full of these gamma irradiated creatures, which is really kind of wild. Of course, Gamma Flight fights them off to a degree and then basically makes their way to what is in effect a safe house. But the thing about this is that as they get in there, they find these construction workers who are working on things, but they're like these gamma irradiated monsters. And so that's when Dion starts to come clean and talk about the nature of the Green Spring project. And the whole idea behind it is that it was literally grafting gamma radiation to people. Now it was initially billed as a kind of improvement 
movement to an individual person. It started out with military application, which was basically like, we can make soldiers faster, stronger, more capable on the battlefield, kind of like a uh, Captain America super soldier type situation. But what Dion ended up finding out and what seems to have come to a head here in the relatively near future is that what's actually happening is that with Emil Blonsky, you know, abomination, being the one to spearhead all this, that they're actually applying gamma irradiated tapeworms to people. In effect, it takes them over and it turns them, really would turn the world into like a whole, just a huge place full of gamma irradiated zombies all of which seem to be operating according to the whims and wants of Abomination. Now, we don't explicitly find out if that's the case because this like depiction of these individuals who are gamma irradiated zombies, that's about as, as extensive as it gets. Now, one of the things to know is that Dion does not really come forward with the information that Emil Blonsky is the one running everything. And in fact, the only reason we know is because Al Ewing told us. Gamma Flight doesn't even know that's the case. And even Dion herself seems to be holding that information information back. But what she also says is once she learned the truth about what was going on, that this was initially billed as a military thing, but in reality, it's just a desire to acquire a massive amount of power. She ultimately fled, right? She literally took off. Hence the reason why everything was going nuts in Austin and why Scar showed up and everything that led us to here. But what ends up going on here is that back in kind of like the present day, you've basically got the other half of Gamma Flight, right? Like literally Charlene McGowan, who's just kind of like their scientific head. She's basically trying to find a way to bring them back. They don't know that they're in the future, right? They're just trying to find a way to teleport them back to lock onto their signal. But as Gamma Flight makes their way through like this kind of future wasteland to a degree, they end up coming across what is basically the body of General Fortian, right? Like the body of what is actually Dion's father, which again is kind of a big revelation. Hence the reason she was all, you know, she was brought on board in the first place. But of course, at this point, they don't fully know what's going on. And even with General Fortian himself, he kind of seems to be communicating of his own volition, which is kind of weird because his head's twisted around on his head or like on his, on his shoulders. It's a 180 degree twist, his neck's broken, right? So it's kind of weird how in the world this guy's able to talk. But of course, before they really even get any information whatsoever or any revelation at all, they're ultimately teleported back. So this future depiction of what the world looks like is less about information gathering outside of what it was that Dion told us, and is really more designed to kind of show the end result of how this entire project will unfold. And so because Gamma Flight realizes what will actually happen if they don't find a way to stop this, what they end up doing is basically traveling directly to the base of Greenspring, right? Literally going to its location and being led there by Dion herself. And so one of the things that I wanna do is I wanna get into like the nature of Scar and how it is that he got his powers, because this is an important distinction here. So first things first, let's talk about General Fortian and Abomination. So Abomination has just kind of been dead for a little while, but what ended up happening is that when he passed through the green door, Abomination was reborn in the body of General Fortian. And so what this did is it allowed Emil Blonsky to take on his abomination form, but when he transforms back into his human form, he turns into General Fortian. But what it did is it gave him all the memories of General Fortian along with all of his own experiences. So one, he's basically this guy with all this military experience, hence the reason why he's more intelligent and more capable than he normally is. Because under normal circumstances, I mean, let's just, let's just call it for what it is. Abomination's kind of dumb. I mean, like, let's, let's just say, right? Let's just, let's just call it, right? He's just kind of a dumb lumbering beast who's really comparable and capable to the Incredible Hulk. And like, that's basically it. But him having the memories and the knowledge of General Fortian, that's what makes him so capable in the here and now. So that should answer the question that a lot of you guys probably have, which is, why is Abomination so smart all of a sudden, right? Why is he so capable all of a sudden? But the other part of this is that seemingly ever since General Fortian had reappeared and basically come back to life after his death, the reality is that it's just been Abomination pretending to be him. Now, if you read Immortal Hulk, you already knew that, right? That was literally told to us by Al Ewing. But for people who never read Immortal Hulk, that's kind of where Abomination ended up returning. But because of the fact that he had the face of General Fortian, and he's literally in a base of people, all of whom believe that General Fortian is following the right idea, it allowed Abomination to kind of control things behind the scenes with no one being any the wiser to the fact that Abomination was controlling General Fortian. 
And so one of the things that ended up happening here is that by whatever manner and whatever means, Scar became part of the equation. Now with him being depowered, the idea here seems to be a desire to regain his power, to get back to where he was before. And so this is why he was given a portion of Abomination's flesh, which basically allowed him to regain his gamma radiation, all the while being unaware of the fact that he would ultimately end up becoming an agent of Abomination, even against his own will, right? Literally becoming a kind of mindless servant. And so once this was proved to be successful, the same project was initiated with Dion, as well as a multitude of other people. Now, for the most part, the kind of grand expansion that Abomination, or at least that we saw in the future, under Abomination, that hasn't happened yet. Most of these soldiers who were like uh, gamma irradiated zombies to a degree, they're just operating inside the base, right? They're just kind of there in this local base and that's effectively it. But the realization of what it is that Abomination is looking to achieve has to ultimately be dealt with. The big caveat to this and the kicker to this is that Doc Samson starts talking about something called the Cathexis Ray, which is a ray that has the ability to split people, specifically in this instance, separating Emil Blonsky from General General Fortean, right? Splitting the two in half. Now it's also gonna have a secondary benefit later on down the line, but one of the things that goes on is that once they make their way to the base, having been led there by both Dion as well as Rick Jones and Delray, who we haven't really talked about yet, but like that's the guy who's green and has like a head sticking out of his shoulders. It's, it's a whole crazy thing. Literally, it was two different people who were ultimately merged. That's essentially what's going on here. But ultimately, like between these two, Gamma Flight is led directly to the base of Greenspring. And so once they arrive on the scene, things basically kind of go the way you would expect them to, right? Like Scar goes out to kind of get his, uh, get his sort of pay back to a degree on Gamma Flight and literally starts attacking the entirety of the team, leading a kind of army of these Gamma irradiated zombie type guys with him, right? They just face off against the forces of Gamma Flight. What is cool here about, about Scar is it is interesting to see that his character has a little more development. The downside here is that it's not the Scar we traditionally know. Now, people who are hardcore fans of Scar simply won't like that, right? They're like, I wanna see the version I love or I don't wanna see a version at all. It's just a different writer's interpretation on the character of Scar. But the reality is that like, even I'm kind of disappointed that it's not like the super awesome Scar that we're normally familiar with. The guy is, by all standards of measurement, a henchman, right? That's basically what he is here. Now, he is able to hold his own against the entirety of Gamma Flight, and for the most part, like, he kind of crushes this team to the point that, like, they only really have one option, and that is basically... Dion talking directly to Scar. It's one of these cool moments, and I love the way that Al Ewing did this, because what she basically reveals to him is that he's ultimately being used. That Abomination doesn't actually care about Scar. Even if he's putting off this idea that like, the Incredible Hulk did you wrong, and I can basically make you, I could make you whole again, and I did make you whole, right? And we can kind of fix these things, and you can get the revenge on your dad that you want, and that kind of a thing. That Abomination doesn't actually care about Scar. That, that what Abomination is doing is basically using Scar to achieve his own ends. That's really all that's happening here. But once that explanation is given to uh, given to, to Scar by Dion, then he ultimately turncoats against Abomination and all of his forces. More so than that, what ends up happening is that once they get to this giant ray gun, that once they try to turn it on, it actually explodes. Like it actually overloads and then just blows up. So now this thing is completely and totally useless. But fortunately for us, Absorbing Man, who has now become a plot device in the Gamma Flight story, ends up touching the machine and then absorbing the gun into himself. So now like his hand is this cannon that fires off this ray that separates beings who are imbued with gamma radiation. And so one of the things that he does is he literally fires this thing off at the Rick Jones Del Rey merger of sorts and splits those two characters in half. So like they go back to their status quo. But with Scar siding against uh, Abomination and actually joining the forces of Gamma Flight, he ends up taking the fight directly to, uh, to Abomination himself which is kind of a cool thing because in the midst of this giant explosion, one of the things that it had also done is it had basically nullified the gamma irradiated zombie type guys. They end up spitting out these tapeworms and just going back to the normal cells. So just kind of a way to sort of wrap things up. But this is where things get cool because one of the things to know about Abomination, right? And it's one of the things that's really unappreciated about his character. While Abomination is normally dumb, he's ridiculously powerful. I mean, it's crazy how strong and capable Abomination is. And in fact, it's really kind of an amazing moment here because what you have, right, to give you guys perspective here, this is like the Incredible Hulk having all the strength he traditionally has, 
but having the battle experience of Thunderbolt Ross. That's basically what this is. Imagine what kind of, what that Incredible Hulk would look like. That's a version of the Incredible Hulk, and that's actually a story that I wanna see. This, this is a version of the Incredible Hulk that would basically be able to use military strategy to kill the Marvel Universe. It'd be pretty cool, right? It'd be pretty awesome. It'd be like if Captain America became the Hulk. That's literally what this is, right? So that's how Abomination is, are, is, is operating right now. And so that's the reason why if this were any other circumstance where you've got Absorbing Man, Crusher Creel with this giant ray gun for an arm that would split uh, Abomination and General Fortian in half, that like Abomination would largely just be defeated and the story would end like that, that instead he actually uses battle strategy to overtake Absorbing Man and then in turn start firing his weapon off at other people. Not only that, once Absorbing Man is dealt with, you then have Scar who jumps into the fray, and again, Abomination crushes Scar. Like, he literally just snaps his arm, just like that. And that's one of the cool things, right? This is one of those moments when people will either agree with it or they will disagree with it. I actually agree with it, right? I agree with this idea because Abomination is by and large under any normal circumstance comparable to Scar or even stronger just because of the fact that Abomination has gone toe to toe with the Incredible Hulk under some pretty heavy handed circumstances. And so once you have this version of Abomination with the military strategy of, of General Fortian, that includes martial arts training and all that kind of stuff, right? All those different things. So it's no small wonder that he's able to overtake pretty much everybody here. What's also crazy is that like Dion steps in trying to take out Abomination and he literally just starts absorbing her, right? Like quite literally just like, like inhaling her. It's kind of nuts how that whole thing goes. But given the nature of her powers and the fact that she is kind of intangible to a degree, she basically ends up overtaking, kind of swarming into Abomination, which allows a momentary distraction where kind of shot can be fired at Abomination just long enough to sort of kind of send him out of the equation. Now, what's really kind of weird about this, and this is the thing that I don't really agree with, is that Abomination sort of retreating just feels arbitrary, right? It just kind of feels arbitrary and weird. He had them all on the ropes. I mean, he had them all on the ropes. Scar was out of the equation. Gamma Flight was getting crapped on. I mean, he had these guys for the most part taken care of. But then when, when Charlene McGowan just fires off this laser shot at him, which is enough to injure him, that he in turn is like, okay, now it's time for me to go, right? I mean, it's, it's weird. It's like the old uh, the old Superman TV show from way back in the day, right? Like they're shooting bullets at him, bullets are bouncing off of his chest. So like they throw the gun at him and what does he do? He ducks, right? I mean, it's, it's that kind of thing, right? It's, it's weird. It's just, it seems a little unnecessary here. And so ultimately he ends up basically taking off. And then Gamma Flight kind of continues on his charter of doing whatever it is that it's supposed to be doing, which isn't fully defined because honestly, Gamma Flight was just a temporary storyline. This is literally a five issue miniseries. So with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.